It's a first of its kind in Europe. What we're talking about here could be a model for us here in the U.S. as well. This is a groundbreaking project. It was unveiled in Belgium where a high-speed train traveled from Antwerp to Amsterdam. It's about 80 miles powered by solar energy. Now, what makes this groundbreaking is the source of that solar energy. The train was getting its electricity from a one-of-a-kind solar tunnel. Now, the tunnel is about 2.2 miles long. Now, more than 16,000 solar panels were installed along the tunnel's roof. Now, that's about eight soccer fields worth of solar panels here. That alone is enough to power 4,000 trains or 1,000 homes in Europe. Now, heading up this project is solar developer Infinity and Infinity CNO Stephen de Tolinaire joins us now from Belgium via Skype. Stephen, I hope I explained that uh, fairly well, how this thing essentially works. But you help me with the tunnel part of this. Uh, how does that part of it work? How do you get the energy from this tunnel you built to power the train? Okay, well, um, typically what we do, we develop these solar installations on many rooftops, generally because the rooftops are idle space that are unused, mm -hmm. and it allows us to um, connect the electricity producing system directly into the electricity system of the people that live under the roof. In this case, it is the Belgian infrastructure uh, railway system, and those people use the electricity directly to power that train going through that tunnel up to Amsterdam, as well as part of the, uh, of the uh, station in Antwerp. Now, how far could that train go? We talked about an 80-mile trip here, but again, it traveled through the tunnel, but then it went about 80 miles, but how far could it have gone? Well, it will all depend on the amount of sunshine we have, right? Uh -huh. This is a complement to other sources of electricity, but it will basically, it depends on the size of the installation. If we would complete the tunnel and build larger systems, it could power the train for, for many, many miles more. Um, of course, we need also other sources of electricity to, drive, to travel at night or days when it's more rainy and less uh, sunshine. But there's no limit, really, to what you can do. Uh, with this concept. Now, you, you, this was a two-mile tunnel here. I guess, how, how practical is that to build these types of tunnels? I, I assume it, it has a lot to do with, uh, with the t terrain and the geography of a particular area, but is it practical to put these tunnels and uh, to have two miles of them around that, that we could use this as a, as a more practical application for our everyday travel? Right. Well, the tunnels we really there for security reasons and um, ecological reasons to protect the environment. Um, the tunnel really um, is then being used as an opportunity to put the solar system in as the roof is completely unused, it's not visible to the outside. So it's a great space to use to produce electricity because nobody is bothered by it and it's, uh, it's, it's very optimal. Now, Stephen, help the, me uh, understand. You can also use okay, t tell yeah. me how pricey this thing is. Well, it's about $22 million of the total installation. Of course, you have to take into account for solar. You have to you have the entire investment up front because once you have it, you have um, electricity produced with no consumption of fuel or coal, no um, uh, impact on the ecology or environment. It's basically from there free electricity. All right, last thing here, Stephen. What do we do next? Now that you had this, you've had this successful test run, if you will. Um, what do you do with this technology now? Where do we move from here? I think this technology is just as, as its infancy. I mean, there is tremendous amount of buildings that are out there with unused rooftops where we put our systems on. We've done six or seven hundred of those already in the last couple of years. And we continue to put them on and we basically uh, power the people under the rooftop, which are generally logistical centers or production facilities or private houses, if you wish. And that's a great use of, uh, of production of electricity straight into your use. You don't have to use the grid. You don't have to transport. It's optimal. All right, Stephen de Tolan there. Interesting stuff here. We'll see what happens to it down the road, but we appreciate you joining us on Skype from Belgium today. We'll see you down the road, all right? Bye. Thanks so much.